Stephen Curry's 30-piece closed out the Nuggets, Gary Payton II played lockdown perimeter defense, and the young glove also hit a game-sealing three-pointer. Meanwhile, Klay Thompson has officially found form, having just averaged 23 points in 35-plus minutes each night, shooting 50% from the field while taking 9.6 triples per game and knocking down an elite 43% of them in Golden State's opening round series against Denver. This video gives you the full details on why the Golden State Warriors' new death lineup is unstoppable to defend and the terrifying implication it has for the rest of the NBA. Right before that, just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The man who was robbed of the most improved player of the year, and who's won the Warriors several playoff games in Jordan Poole, had consecutive off nights in both Game 4 and 5 against Denver. We all know Deadpool is going to recapture the flow he found during games 1-3, to three, but for the Warriors as a whole, it's been impressive how the offense, as well as Steve Kerr's substitutions, have quickly adjusted to Poole's mini-shooting slump. When JP's running with Curry, Clay, and Draymond, that four-man unit's been nicknamed PTSD, and including Wiggins, the typical crunch time group has been dubbed as the Fast Five. However, the 15th man, Gary Payton II, stayed ready and gave Steve Kerr the supreme value he's been providing all year, therefore creating a new Warriors death lineup, with Golden State up two with just 1-11 remaining. At first, Payton makes the extra swing to Wiggins in the corner, but after Andrew kicks it out, despite fumbling the ball, somehow the young glove collects himself, Jeff Green respects his drive to the basket, giving him just an inch of space, and Payton II made his Hall of Famer dad proud, nailing the Stone Cold Dagger, which helped put the Mile High City to sleep until October. Another solid decision for Kerr was keeping the length and passing lane instincts of Otto Porter Jr. on the floor down the stretch. Automatic may not have lived up to his nickname as he only shot 104 from the field, but Porter Jr. did have a game fourth best plus minus of plus two, and based off his defensive rotations, Steve Kerr keeping him on the floor instead of Wiggins up until the 143 mark of the fourth quarter turned out to be a solid decision. From this point on, credit and shout out to Joseph Vire of Warriors SB Nation. If you want to learn about advanced NBA offensive playsets, or if you just love the Warriors, go follow Joe on Twitter for his top-notch analysis on the dubs. His handle is at NBA. Stephen Curry checked back into Game 5 between the Warriors and Nuggets with 8 minutes and 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. As the Warriors were down by 4 at that point, Otto Porter Jr. clamped up Aaron Gordon and hauled in the defensive rebound. The Dubs continued to execute their basic offensive motion on the other end, running it through their legendary and dynamic two-man game of Curry and Draymond Green, attacking and exposing Nikola Jokic in the pick and roll. Putting Bones Highland and Nikola Jokic on their heels was the right call, considering the rookie Bones isn't a premier screen navigator, while Jokic was playing cautious with four fouls. Steph's quick first step allows him to turn the corner on Jokic easily, and watch how he slows down just enough to force the Joker's momentum to fall into him. That gives Jokic his fifth personal foul. However, after that possession, the Warriors' approach went from strictly movement and passing to featuring their franchise player manufacture buckets by mixing up individual attacks or using his gravitational pull to open up opportunities for the four other players next to him at any given time. This was another great decision from Steve Kerr to allow probably the best player in the world to do his thing down the stretch in a closeout game as opposed to running his typical advanced motion. Running the statistics, and they also favor the decision to let Curry flash his one-on-one -on -one magic. Even though Steve Kerr's offensive system doesn't feature a high volume of isolations or pick and rolls, Curry's been lethal for opponents when he does get those opportunities. Among 103 players who tallied a minimum of 50 isolation possessions during the regular season, Curry has the highest efficiency at 1.2 points per possession. Also, among 99 players who tallied a minimum of 150 possessions as the ball handler in pick and rolls, Curry has the ninth highest efficiency of any player at 1.02 points per possession. A fact speaking to Curry's overall value is that dating all the way back to 2013, 
you'll find that Steph has the highest plus minus of any NBA player, and he leads the second ranked Chris Paul by around 1,200 points. Steph inspirationally stepped back into a bench role, which is something no other superstar of his caliber would even consider doing. For that, we have to give credit to Curry's unselfishness and how he puts the team over his ego at all costs. In terms of Golden State running their classic yet unstoppable split action for Curry in Game 5, the logic behind running it against a laterally questionable big like DeMarcus Cousins definitely adds up, but not if the Nuggets game plan gears towards crowding Curry's space and collectively selling out towards taking away his open attempt. Denver displays that trapping of Steph right here, but after he gives it up to Porter in the corner, this cross-court dime from OPJ and shot clock cheese from GP2 rescued what looked like a brutal half-court possession. It's those back end of the shot clock bailouts which proved the decision to play Peyton to close it out over the likes of Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole was a damn good choice. Peyton's ability to hold attackers in front of him at the point of attack, his wherewithal fighting through screens, and his clutch shot making makes it much easier on the Warriors' top scoring options. On the other end, Peyton's combination with Green seemed to be overwhelming for Denver at times. The first possession after the reigning MVP re-entered at the 622 mark of the fourth, Denver runs a simple high ball screen action with Jokic and Monte Morris. As you can see, the attention to detail, lateral quickness, and all-out hustle from Gary and Draymond put Jokic and Morris in jail. Some stellar lockdown clamps. Gary eliminates Jokic as a possible release point courtesy of a late peel switch as they call it from Draymond, which is when a defender's beaten off dribble penetration and the nearest help defender switches onto the ball, while the beaten defender peels off and switches onto another player. Green's lateral footwork allows him to neutralize Monte's attack, and Morris's desperation jumper with the shot clock winding down is met with a fundamentally sound shot contest from Green. As the 48 minutes played out, Considering the foul trouble from Denver's best player, Golden State's offense began to learn that its one focus needed to be attacking the Joker as much as humanly possible by forcing him to guard in space. Despite Curry getting called for an offensive foul right here, the Warriors kept attacking the Joker in that same pick and roll action and had a ton of success. Right here, watch how it's not just Nicola who's the victim of this Green and Thompson dribble handoff, as Will Barton's below average ability to fight through screens leaves Nicola on an island to defend Thompson's downhill drive all by himself. Will's lack of trail and recovery places Jokic in a bind, and with five fouls, he can't fully commit to a hard contest on Thompson's layup. Next, following up two made charity stripe attempts, the Warriors execute a screen and roll involving Curry, at first designed as a corner stagger for Thompson. But this is where the coaching chess match throughout a series in the half court really kicks in. While the Warriors initially call for a Peyton ball screen, Jeff Green pre-switches and takes away the Jokic matchup. This triggers the fake corner stagger, with Draymond getting open in the paint and Jeff Green deciding to take him, which leaves Peyton as the man on Jokic yet again. After another dribble handoff, Curry takes the opportunity to attack Jokic in drop coverage, pulls up, and drains the mid-range jumper like it's nothing. Nikola was still going off on the other end and tied up the game at 90 apiece which was followed by Denver making a slight adjustment by having Jokic play higher up, above the three-point line, extending the meetup point, and taking away Curry's space even further. However, that ended up being a game-altering mistake, considering Peyton's speed advantage over Jokic. Peyton's ability to set ball screens higher up, almost raising the edge of the half-court logo, forces Jokic to have to pick up Curry even higher, all while Peyton is content with speeding past Jokic, receiving the pocket pass, and finishing over the late help rotation by Jeff Green. Curry continuously running ball screen action, his constant movement, and the utter panic he generates in the half court, ultimately took a significant toll on the Nuggets. Gotta give credit to Jokic who extended the series by dropping 30-19-8 on 69.7% true shooting. Steph, who's averaging 35-5 on 59.8% true shooting in these playoffs so far, delivered in the clutch like a superstar supposed to. With help from his supporting cast, Curry sent a resilient Denver team to Cancun, with a healthy Clay, a lockdown defender, an all-around great player in Gary Payton II, combined with either Wiggins and Draymond, or Porter Jr. and Draymond, 
that gives Warrior fans yet another deadly lineup to nickname. This Warriors team looks poised for another championship run. In your opinion, what's Curry's best quality outside of shooting? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video. Shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.